A gunman shot a couple at the downtown aquarium restaurant in Houston, Texas, killing a man and injuring a woman before taking his own life. The incident occurred around 8.10pm, located at 810 Bagby Street, when officers responded to the shooting on the second floor of the aquarium. The event unfolded when 29-year-old Gabriel Vargas and his 24-year-old wife were at the restaurant bar having dinner during their visit to Houston from New York, when the suspect, who was sitting at the opposite end of the bar, got up and went over to the area where the couple were and started firing shots at them before turning the gun on himself. The gunman was later identified as 39-year-old Danny Gazaras and Vargas was pronounced dead on the scene. Vargas's wife was shot in the leg and was transported to the hospital in a stable condition. The authorities believe that the shooting to be a random incident where the couple were unfamiliar with Gazaras. Gazaras was sitting at the bar by himself, drinking for several hours before the shooting occurred. The couple shared several pictures and a video of their visit to the restaurant on social media. In one video, Kazaris could be seen just a few feet away from the couple at the bar. Kazaris was out on bond for a gun charge back in April, after his niece called police to a restaurant saying he was high on meth and had a pistol. The authorities arrested him when he was seated at a bar with a loaded pistol in his pocket. In October of 2020, he was charged with criminal mischief for trashing a motel room. He told the investigators that he thought someone was inside the room, so he trashed it while trying to find the person. On Christmas Eve, he was found wandering around a fire department's bunkhouse. He was arrested and charged with criminal trespass. The authorities said that Kazaris has a history of mental illness. A man has been arrested after parents of a five-year-old girl restrained the man with duct tape after he broke into their daughter's bedroom. The incident occurred around 5am on the 6th of July when a pervert, later identified as a registered offender, 39-year-old David Dietz, started creeping around the outside of a home located in Grayson, California. He first knocked on the door and then he tried to open it. The parents of the residence then saw the man peering inside the living room window, showing his private parts and touching himself, repeatedly saying I love you. The girl's father confronted the stranger and told him to leave, but he didn't listen. The parents then lost sight of the man as he went around to the other side of the house when they heard a loud sound. The man removed the screen to the window of a five-year-old girl's bedroom before crawling inside. The man then turned on the light. That's when the little girl woke up to the exposed stranger in front of her and became frightened. The father rushed into the room and pulled the man outside, where he wrestled him and pinned him to the ground. He and his wife then restrained him using duct tape, called 911 and waited for the officers to arrive. Diaz was convicted of assault with intent to commit a lewd act in 2009 and was released in 2018. Diaz was arrested and charged with child endangerment, home invasion and peeping and prowling. He's been held on a $150,000 bond. A man has been arrested and charged with offences relating to violent and lewd acts he committed against a woman he lived with. The incident occurred on Tuesday the 6th of July when the victim had work colleagues over at the farmstead drive home in Aiken County, South Carolina. When 44-year-old Alvin Crew got home, he was furious, leading to a violent evening after her fellow employees left. Crew was particularly upset that she had male colleagues over at the house for several hours. Alone at the house, Crew punched her in the head multiple times and kicked her when she tried to run away, injuring her head, ribs and arms. Crew then forced her to strip her clothes off and stand in the middle of a tile shower as he pointed a gun at her and belittled her. Crew then shot one round into the shower that the victim occupied, which struck just in front of the victim's feet. He later forced her to perform an oral act on him as he sat in bed with a gun right beside him. The woman's co-workers rang the police when the victim called them the following day to say she wasn't coming in. They said that was unusual for her and they wanted the police to do a welfare check. When the deputies arrived at the couple's home, Crew saw them and tried to hide behind the garage doors. They found the victim so scared that she asked their deputies to leave before they finally separated the couple and took Crew away in handcuffs. That's when she told them what happened. The investigators found a bullet hole in the shower, as well as marijuana paraphernalia and an AR-15 loaded full of ammunition. The victim had bruising to the left side of her face and felt like she may have had a possible broken rib 
and a broken finger. She said her family would take her to the hospital. Crew was charged with criminal lewd conduct, domestic violence, kidnapping, pointing and presenting firearms at a person, possession of a weapon during violent crime, and a related weapons offence. A woman is facing murder and felony abuse charges after locking her two daughters in a hot bedroom where a five-year-old child died and a two-year-old sister was rescued. The 23-year-old mother, Kamala Taylor, had been acting strange and a friend of hers became concerned when she received a text from her that she perceived as a vague suicidal threat. That friend requested a welfare check on her on the 16th of June. The authorities went to the home located at 10,256 Missouri Meadows Street in Las Vegas, Nevada, but they couldn't locate her or the children. On the 26th of June, the neighbors also noticed that Taylor was acting peculiar. At one point, she sat in the driveway holding her children wrapped in blankets in the middle of a hot day. She'd also been seen throwing rocks at vehicles and breaking a truck's window with a KitchenAid mixer. At 7pm on the 28th of June, the authorities received a report of a disturbance at the address and two deputies managed to make contact with Taylor and found the home to be in complete disarray. She was acting weird and appeared to be suffering from some sort of mental illness. The officers took Taylor into custody and began searching the house and came across a locked bedroom door upstairs. They then kicked the door open and discovered Taylor's daughters inside. The two-year-old was standing next to a bed while the five-year-old was laying unresponsive on it. One of the deputies began CPR on her until the paramedics arrived, but to no avail and she was pronounced dead. The authorities noted that the air conditioning in the house was not on and the temperature in the bedroom felt far warmer than the rest of the residence. While the home's thermostat read 95 degrees, the temperature in the room was 108 degrees. In addition, a humidifier was turned on to the maximum position. After Taylor was put in the back of the patrol car, she began making utterances including it was a necessary sacrifice and insisted on being taken to a mental institution. Neighbors also told police they overheard her say I killed it and claimed to be the son of Jacob. The landlord said Taylor struggled financially and failed to pay the rent in June. Taylor faces a murder charge along with two counts of felony abuse. Her younger daughter was taken by Child Protective Services. She's scheduled in court on the 15th of July. A Utah man has been charged with aggravated abuse after deliberately leaving a disabled woman locked in a hot car. 66-year-old Richard Young got into an argument with the victim, whose name's been suppressed, in Murray City on Friday the 9th of July. Upset, Richard turned off the car, took his keys out, and said have a nice life as he walked away, leaving the woman with no way of getting out of the vehicle. The outdoor temperature was 101 degrees. The woman was in the car for 15 to 20 minutes with the windows rolled up and it was becoming extremely hot inside the car. The woman became paralyzed from the heat as she suffers from multiple sclerosis, which Richard was well aware of. The local fire department was called and helped to get out of the car. She was given a drink, a wet towel and ice packs to cool down. Richard has been charged with aggravated abuse of a disabled adult.